Before starting your building, three things to remember while working on your building. One, watch the video through several times to ensure you understand the process of assembling the building before starting any work. Two, measure twice and cut once. Three, take your time and do everything safely and correctly. Section 1. Marking out the building. The first job that we need to do when we get on site is to check that the slab measurements are the same as engineering plans. That is, measuring the width and length of the slab, and most importantly, making sure the slab is square by checking the diagonals of the slab. Also check how level the slab is. Now we need to mark two chalk lines down the length of the building, marking the inside edge of our columns. This line will later be used to bolt our walls to. The line will ensure walls are straight and in the correct location. Blue chalk is the best colour as it is easy to see and doesn't stain like other colours may. To work out the position of the first chalk line, we add the width of one column, C section, and one side wall girt, top hat or Z section, together. This total measurement, now to be known as frame dist, is then marked from the outside edge of the slab at either end of one side wall. Then flick the chalk line on these marks. Now to mark the second chalk line we need to calculate the distance between the columns. This distance will be called raft dist. To calculate raft dist, use the span of the building minus two times frame distance. This distance is measured across the span of the building from chalk line one to chalk line two. This now completes section one. Section two, making up girts and purlins. Lay out your sidewall girts and roof purlins onto your slab. Check your bill of material to ensure you have the correct length sections. Then join them together with overlap to suit the length of the building, ensuring all overlaps are equal on buildings with more than two bays. For ease of handling, it is recommended that girts and purlins be joined together in multiples of no more than two at a time. Once joined, mark the position of the intermediate portal frames onto the top hat section using a permanent marker. Now that was easy. Section 3. Creating rafters. Lay out the rafters and apex brackets onto the slab. Note this building has a bolted frame. Split the rafters into two equal groups and stand on their edges. Make sure you have the correct end of the rafter as the top by checking the punchings on the section match up with the punchings on the apex bracket. Mark the position of the roof purlins on the rafters with a permanent marker or crayon. See your engineering plans for quantity and spacing. A temporary screw can be put at the bottom of each purlin to assist when later installing roof purlins. Now lay two rafters and one apex bracket together on the foundation, assuming single frame. Using the apex bracket as a guide, put them at the approximate roof pitch, ensuring the C-sections meet at the apex. Put the apex bracket on the rafter and place two framing screws, one in each rafter, securing the apex bracket into position. Measure long point to long point of rafters. Adjust until measurement equals raft dist, as mentioned in section one of this DVD. Place a second tech screw through the apex bracket into the rafter, locking the rafters at the correct roof pitch. Then bolt the apex bracket securely into position, as per engineering plans. Repeat this process with the other rafters. Then move aside until required later. Section 4. Creating Columns. Lay all columns flat on the slab, down both side walls, at the approximate bay spacings. Now attach haunch brackets to the web side of the columns. When placing the left and right handed haunch brackets onto the columns, ensure that the web face of each column will face the front of the building when built, giving the building more aesthetic appeal. Ensure that the top of the bracket is flush with the top of the column. Tech screw or bolt the bracket into place. One tech screw is placed in the bracket to hold it in place. Then it is fully fixed off according to engineering plans. Tip, 
Front and rear portals must have the web of the columns facing in towards the centre of the building. This is for aesthetics and may also be used to attach gable end roller doors to. Now fix your base cleat brackets to the web side of the base of the column. Where double columns are used, base cleats are fixed to the inside of both C-sections. Note, it may be necessary to offset base cleats on the columns that roller doors are to be fitted to, to allow for roller door tracks. Now Eve Perlin brackets are attached to the top of each column using two frame screws per side of the bracket. The Eve Perlin bracket needs to be at the height stipulated in the instruction manual, depending on the frame size and roof pitch. Repeat this process for the other columns. Section 5. Making up the wall frames. Rotate your columns 90 degrees to stand on their flange, with the Eve Perlin bracket facing upwards down one side wall. The Eve Perlin is attached to the Eve Perlin bracket using one framing screw on each end. The size of the Eve Perlin is dependent on the size of the frame. Note, C-section Eve Perlins are butt jointed together on the Eve Perlin bracket. Repeat this process for the remaining columns. On some buildings, top hat eaves may be used. Consult your engineering plans for details. You are now ready to mark sidewall girth spacing on the columns. Check engineering plans for spacings. The end of the girths will be flush with the outside edge of the end columns, that is, overall length of the slab. At this stage, only place one frame screw per connection to hold the girths in place. When complete, you are now ready to square the frame. Use a string line to make sure the bottoms of the columns are in a straight line. Measure the diagonals of the wall frame, ensuring that both measurements are equal. If not, adjust the wall until the measurements are equal, making sure the base of the columns remains straight to the string line. Once square, you can finish the frame by fixing the side girts and eave purlins completely off to the columns, according to engineering plans. If sidewall bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to cladding walls. Your wall frame is now complete and ready for cladding. Section 6. Sidewall Sheeting. First lay sheeting on wall girts, making sure that the female rib of the cladding is facing away from prevailing weather. Then make sheeting flush with top of the eave purlin, ensuring that the sheets will overlap the foundation of the building to prevent water entering. Using the required number of wall screws, as per engineering plans, fix the wall sheets using a straight edge or chalk line to ensure screws are placed in a straight line. Ensure that the wall remains square while sheeting and that the sheets are fixed square to the frame. Once fully secured, cut the last wall sheet flush to the end of the wall girts. This completes sheeting for one side of the wall frame. Section 7. Guttering. Note, depending upon the length of the structure, gutters can either be fitted now or after the walls are standing. First peel the protective plastic back off the gutters and stop ends. Then place the gutter stop ends to the gutter and then drill and rivet into position. Now position the downpipe nozzle onto the underside of the gutter. Trace the inside of the nozzle using a permanent marker. Then cut a hole in the gutter using tin snips, then silicone, drill and pop rivet into position. Fit gutter bracket to ribs of wall sheets using pop rivets with a slight fall towards downpipes, making the highest point of the gutter bracket in line with the top of the wall cladding. Gutter brackets to be spaced at one metre centres maximum. Clip gutter onto gutter brackets, ensuring gutters overhang end walls by a thickness of wall cladding, allowing the barge capping to conceal gutter end neatly. Apply silicone to gutter joints prior to installing onto gutter clips. Fold gutter bracket tags down onto the gutter to hold it into position. Once complete, 
Congratulations on finishing one wall. Section 8. Complete the opposite side wall. Repeat the steps previously shown from 4 to 7 of this DVD. Note, on smaller buildings where space is limited on the foundation, only one wall at a time can be built due to the lack of space. In this case, stand one wall, temporarily brace it and repeat steps 4 to 7 to assemble opposite side wall. Section 9 and 10, standing walls. Secure rope ties into the ground with stakes, then tie off onto frame. Make sure that you have removed the string line from the bottom of the wall. With the assistance of competent helpers, one side wall can now be lifted into position. Ensure the end columns are flush with the ends of the foundation. Position the inside edge of the columns to the previously marked chalk line on the foundation. Carefully lift the walls up. Brace and prop both sides of the wall using timber or alternatively ropes tied securely around stakes driven into the ground. Do not attempt to stand sheeted walls on windy days. Drill holes through base cleats on each column and secure with appropriate anchor bolt as per engineering plans. Ensure that all holes are clean before placing masonry anchors. Check that all anchors are tightened down sufficiently and check columns are roughly plumb using a spirit level. Readjust props if necessary. Repeat the process for the opposite wall. Section 11. Install end rafter. Starting at the back wall of the building, carefully lift the back rafter and fit onto the haunch brackets. Using quick release clamps, clamp the rafters to the haunch bracket until all bolts are in position. The centre of the rafter should be supported temporarily until the end wall mullions are in place. Check the columns are plumb and adjust props as required. Two frame screws are put in place to hold portal in location. Then fix off connection completely according to engineering plans. Make sure to tighten bolts. The end rafter is now installed. Section 12. Installing end wall framing. First fix the base cleat to the bottom of the end wall mullion. Now fix the end wall mullion bracket to the top of the end wall mullion on the web face of the section. End wall mullions are to be spaced as per engineering plans and are to be offset by the size of the end girt from the edge of the slab. End wall mullions are fitted so that the web of the C-section is perpendicular to the end wall girt and with the web face of the mullion facing towards the prominent opening of the building. Stand the end wall mullions into position and drill holes through base cleats on each mullion and secure with appropriate anchor bolt as per engineering plans. Check that all anchors are tightened down sufficiently. Check mullions are plumb using a spirit level on the web face. Now fix the end wall mullion bracket to the rafter as per engineering plans. Check mullions are plumb using a spirit level on the flange side and securely prop mullion into position. Section 13. Installing remaining rafters. Now fit remaining rafters as shown in section 12. As each intermediate rafter is fitted, at least one roof purlin, more on larger buildings, must be fixed into position, securing all rafters back to the rigid end wall. As this particular job was a small building that was built on a day with no wind, we could install all our rafters with no purlins. This should only be done by experienced tradespeople. Make sure to plumb each portal frame before tightening bolts. You are now ready to proceed to the next stage. Section 14, fixing roof purlins. Lift previously made up roof purlins onto the rafters, aligning them with temporary screws that are in place from a previous step. Roof purlins end flush with the outer face of the rafters on the end wall. Fix into position with one screw per connection initially to hold purlin in place. 
Ensure that end walls and all intermediate rafters are plumb before the roof purlins are fully fixed in place, as per engineering plans. Ensure that the spacing between the rafters is the same as the spacing between the columns. If roof bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to sheeting the roof. Section 15. Fixing apex and knee braces if required. Fit any knee or apex braces as supplied. Refer to engineering plans for size, fitting location and fixing detail. On back-to-back -back frames, it is required to notch the ends of apex and knee braces to fit in between back-to-back -back frames. This is done using an angle grinder. This can also be done on single-framed buildings for aesthetics. Section 16. End Wall Girts. Fix the end wall girt brackets to the inside edge of the end wall as shown. Spacings as per engineering plans, which is generally the same as side wall spacings. Attach the end wall girts to these brackets, overlapping the girts on the end wall mullions. If end wall bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to cladding the wall. You are now ready for cladding. Section 17. Fly bracing if required. Please check and install fly bracing if required, as per your engineering plans. Section 18. End wall cladding. The rear wall is now ready for cladding. First, sort wall sheet lengths from longest to shortest and lay out on flat surface. Starting from one corner of the building, begin sheeting the walls. Make sure that the female rib of the cladding is facing away from prevailing weather, keeping the bottom of the end wall cladding level with the bottom of the side wall cladding. Ensure that sheeting covers side wall girts. Using the required number of wall screws, as per engineering plans, fix end wall sheets using a straight edge or chalk line to ensure screws are placed in a straight line. Cut the last wall sheet flush to the outside of the side wall girts. Once all the sheets are in position, we need to trim the tops of the end wall sheets flush with the roof sheets. We do this using an electric nibbler or tin snips. Once complete, then screw top of sheets to the top lip of rafters. Section 19, cladding second end wall with a gable end roller door. The second end wall on this job has got a roller door in it so the framing is going to be slightly different from the end wall we have just sheeted. Firstly, we need to install the roller door posts. We are going to use one of the side wall columns to attach one side of the roller door to. From this column, we need to measure the width of the curtain of the roller door, minus two times track width, and put a mark on the concrete with a builder's pencil at this location. This will give us the opening width we require for our framework. We now attach a base cleat bracket to the bottom of the roller door post. We have to move the base cleat bracket over to allow room for the roller door track. Now we stand the post vertically and align the inside edge of the post to our door opening width mark. Level the post and mark the underside of the rafter onto the post. Now we stand the post vertically and align the inside edge of the post to our door opening width mark. Level the post and mark the underside of the rafter onto the post. Now bring the post down to the ground and cut it to the line just marked using a drop saw or angle grinder. Once cut, attach an end wall mullion bracket to the end of the post, allowing half of the bracket to sit on the post and the other half to overhang the end of the post. Check engineering plans for number of fixings. Now stand the post back into position on the opening width mark. Drill holes through base cleat bracket with masonry drill in the concrete and bolt bottom of the post down. Now plumb the post again and fix it into position. Fix the end wall girt brackets to the inside edge of the roller door post and also on the side wall column as per engineering plans. If end wall bracing is required, fix into position prior to cladding the wall. Now we need to fit the door header. The door header is held in place via end wall girt brackets. So let's fix two by end wall girt brackets to the roller door posts at door height. Now fit the door header, which will already be to the correct length or opening width. 
Your roller door may be too high for your building if it is installed at its full opening height. This is fully acceptable. All that will happen is some of the door curtain will remain on the door drum at all times. When calculating door header heights, take note of the door location and door drum depth to ensure header isn't too high. Section 20. Roof Sheeting Note, before fixing the roof sheeting into position, check that side walls and end walls are straight and plumb. Reprop if necessary. This also keeps structure more rigid while working on the roof. Now turn up sheeting along ridge line of roof cladding with pliers to protect from rain. This is called weathering the sheets. Then fix roof sheeting allowing approximately half of the gutter width or 50 millimetres, whichever is the least, overhang into the gutter. Ensure that the female rib of the cladding is facing away from the weather. Check that roof sheets are parallel to the front edge of gutter at all times. If skylights are supplied in your building, ensure that all safety precautions are taken in accordance with local regulations. Once complete, you are now ready to move to the final stage. Section 21, Flashings. Corner and opening flashings. Install all corner and opening flashings, ensuring bottoms of flashings are flush to the bottom of wall sheets. Ensure flashing is secure and watertight. Ridge capping. Install ridge capping, ensuring that the ends are flush with the outside of the end wall cladding. Joints must be facing away from prevailing weather and run a bead of silicone where the ridge overlaps. Screw ridge capping into roof purlins on both sides of the flashing. Barge capping. Fix the first length of the barge capping in position using wall screws or rivets in the vertical leg of the flashing into the ribs of wall sheets. Then use roof flashing screws through the horizontal leg of the flashing into the roof purlins. Ensure the top of the barge capping is in line with the center of the ridge capping. Sit the second barge capping into position and mark a vertical cutting line. Plumb cut down the face of the barge using a spirit level and trim with tin snips to the marked line. Fasten the second barge capping into position. Plumb cut the ends of the barge level with the ends of the gutter. You are now ready for the next step. Section 22, down pipes. First remove plastic coating, then Fix down pipes to nozzle with pop rivets or wall screws. The larger end of the down pipe is attached to the nozzle, allowing water to flow correctly. An astragal or down pipe bracket can be formed by trimming 50 millimeters off the end of the down pipe and folding into the desired shape. Alternately, a screw can be fixed from the inside of the building through the bottom sidewall girt into the downpipe. Now that was easy. Finish. You have now finished building your shed. However, to complete, please check these final critical steps. 1. Make a final check of the structure. 2. Ensure that all base cleats have been tightened down firmly. 3. Check that all roof and wall screws are in place. 4. Brush the complete structure down, including the roof, with a soft hair broom to remove any swarf, metal dust and filings caused by angle grinder and tech screws. 5. Hose down the concrete slab to remove any steel particles, screws and rivets, which may puncture a tyre. 6. Now stand back and congratulate yourself on a job well done.